In the last video, uh, how to harvest bamboo with an axe, I was talking about using the bamboo for the battens. Now that day I think the biggest piece of bamboo I could find was less than 25 millimeters, less than an inch, and it's just not chunky enough to support the thatch, let alone me while I'm laying the thatch. So I had to consider other options, uh, particularly for the area between the crux frame and the valley poles because that is about well i think at the top it could be it's as much as two meters and that's a fairly decent span for a small pole therefore i, I do need something that's a bit chunkier now one possibility to come to an area like this with incredibly thick uh, regrowth uh, there was a fire here i think it was about 10 years ago and the and it's killed the old trees and then this regrowth has come up incredibly dense. And that could work. This would be all sap wood and so it would be prone to insect attack, but it would last a decent while, especially these species, which I think are, yeah, they're, they're boxes. So they're gonna be pretty tough. Uh, and that would be like something like this, which is about an inch thick, um, would work really, really well. The problem is while it's legal for the power company to just come in and trash all the native vegetation underneath the power lines it's illegal for me to come in here and selectively thin out this timber even though that would actually be good for the trees and arguably good for the for the ecosystem here so that's not an option so i'm in an area of mine waste and most of it is this sort of scrubby material very shallow topsoil because it's all been taken away and what's left is sort of the mullock and the waste from the mining but in the gully behind me, there's a range of different exotic species. Well, at least exotic for Australia. Don't do that. Wait. So here we've got some ash. Now ash has got a lot of really cool uses, but it's not gonna be good for this job because it's uh, very susceptible to insect attack. But here, this is plum. And plum being a fruit wood, it's pretty, it's pretty good at resisting insect attack. We've just got to find some pieces that suit our purpose. And here we have a tree that looks like it's got lots of opportunities. We have got some reasonably thick straight pieces, which will be great. But we've also got uh, some curved stuff as well. And that'll be good for the valleys or the gullies to support the thatch. That's better. See how that's cutting more now? That's it. There we go. Right. Now, I reckon we can take this one as well. That big one. Yeah. Do you want to use the bigger saw? Yeah. Go. Uh, 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 uh. Do you want me to get it started for you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, at the back of the hold the hold hold it near the back. That's it. All right, you got to have it the same same angle as I had it. It's just hard because it's hard. yeah, well, it's hard work. That's the thing. That's home. it. That's it. Well done. No, oh, we can't go home yet. We haven't got enough wood. Keep going. That's it. That's great. Well, so much for the kids helping, but anyway. Now, as you saw there, we didn't get a lot of material. And as it's turned out, I've had to go back to the forest to get more bush poles to do this job. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of that because I got Sarah doing the debarking um, in, um, let's just say, not sensible clothes. Uh, and it was rather amusing. Got a little special time out with my partner. <sighs> not sure that's what she'd call it. But anyway, got the material that we need. And in the next video, we're battening out. And then we're going to start laying the thatch. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.